you doing it? Hang on, I've got to get onto. Where do I get this? Honestly, I will leave. We're on now. Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Drowning Joe Neuer into silence. If you're on TikTok, you could have seen this madness. Hello, guys. How are you? Good. Brilliant. Thank you, Lee. Brilliant. We're, thank- <laughs> we're great, Lee. Thank you. Logistics and Joe are hard work. We just needed like two seconds of silence before we went live. You'll get this when you when you look back on the video, Joe. You're talking all over the welcome screen. It's classic stuff. We thank oh, no. everyone out there in listener land, downloading us on all your podcast players, watching us on YouTube. And of course, you could be live with us right now on both TikTok and YouTube. Just search for Jose Noya Inspiration Nation or follow us on the socials. Click on the YouTube link, subscribe, subscribe on TikTok and you can be with us live. I would say six o'clock on a Tuesday. It's sometimes six on a Tuesday, sometimes a Wednesday, sometimes a Thursday. We keep signposting it through the socials though when it happens. So... Who is responsible for the conversation this week? Uh, I think it's me. Um, actually, I think you're I think right, Jose. Me. I do think you're yeah. right. KD91, what's the topic today? Are we getting Look asked already in the TikTok? That's what I like. What they want to know what's going on. They want to know, get on with it. They're just saying, get on with it. That's what they're saying. So let's get on with it. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so today the topic is... Uh, da, da. Well, actually, it's from this book. This book is... Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Is that highly effective people? That's That's it, Lee. We know you're very good with book names, don't we? We know you're brilliant with book names. The thing, the thing, and the thing, right? Yeah. Um, It was was the the thing, the thing, the thing, and the thing. There was four of them. Yeah, and even the the seven things Yes. on this one. It's the seven things. Um, So, guys, get yourself a copy of this book. I love this book. I've had this book for probably 15 to 20 years and I'm still rereading it. In fact, um, what I want to do is I'll tell you what, that YouTube thing is killing me because it's so much delay on it. Hang on, put you in the middle there. Um, so I want to talk about the seven habits. So guys, if you are really interested in this, don't go pick up the book. Um, no, they, we don't, I'm not like, um, you know, I haven't got any vested interest in it. It's just a brilliant, brilliant book. And the reason I've chosen this subject today on this one is called, called put things, oh, it says um, put first, things first now if you go to the youtube channel i've actually got um a book uh, a book uh, playlist and this um this one is actually a specialist playlist that just focuses on stephen covey's habits now i did two episodes on the first and second habits the first habit being proactivity and the second habit begin with the end in mind so go watch those videos because this is going to be the third installment of that trilogy so Essentially, I want to put up another habit. And what I want to do, though, is, is use the podcast to cover that, that habit, putting first things first. So give you a context, guys, about this. So the first habit is uh, be proactive. OK, so the first step, you go back to that video, be proactive. So this just means um, around um, you know, what you're about, your purpose, what you want to really do with your life in terms of how you want to move forward. The second habit is being proactive is then creating that. What would it be like if you're living that life? It's a really powerful uh, chapter. So go and do that. It talks about what we talk about a lot in this podcast. Uh, we call it, he calls them the circles of influence. In fact, that's where the idea come from. We call them circles of control. It doesn't really matter. It's the same sort of thing, but he talks about that. It's a really powerful metaphor. So those two habits there, if you just do those, you, you'll start to get progress. So this one really is about putting the first habit and the second habit and the third habit together. This third, third habit now is about execution. So actually in the book, um, it, actually if you, in the book, I am going to sort of draw out some pages, but in the book, um, it talks about, um, it talks about execution. Um, and as you know, um, execution is the key to everything. Like you have to take action. Um, so, you know, that's what this is about really. It's about, this bit is about, taking action actually if you go to page 169 169 the book I've actually highlighted it it says here um if habit one says you're the programmer um so basically you're programming your mind and all the habits then prior to writing the program then you're actually starting to write habit three says run it so actually start to execute on the plans that you make and um, so this is what this this chapter about so there is something in here which i think is a great tool and i have covered it before and i don't know if we've covered it before in the podcast maybe you guys can just remind me if we have but it's called the covid time management matrix and i'm just going to show this to i'm not sure we have you know jay 
So Who's the guys? So let's I think go we through have, that. Probably. All right then. So it's, it's my that. opinion doesn't matter. I don't know if I can see that. But I'm just going to put that there. We you. muted to him. So now I can hear you. So I'll just, I'm just, oh. I'm just continuing. <laughs> I'm just continuing. Like you did at the start. I, I must be ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just explaining the model. So it's four quadrants. The first quadrant is urgent, important. The second quadrant, which is to the to the to the right hand side, is is not urgent, important. Then the bottom left. Um, is called the urgent and not important quadrant and then you've got the last quadrant which is the bottom right which is called the not urgent not important I stand so the urgent important Joe, tasks are things like this we haven't we yeah 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 but it's good it's good to, to go over it again. so i think yeah in the context of habit one and two we're going to do this it's really important because obviously you know habit one is be proactive sort of design um, then you're writing the program and have it too. You know, you're you're beginning with the end in mind. Are oh, you setting the goal? You know, what's the end look like? And then you're working backwards, like we talked about before in the podcast. So this is about the execution, it's about the doing. So what this matrix does really is it puts into when people say, "I ain't got enough time to do that," it's probably because you're doing a lot of other different things, which are distracting you from actually getting to the main thing. So the the matrix helps you does helps you really just align and make sure you 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 just get rid of the stuff you shouldn't be doing, essentially to get to the what you want to do. So the urgent and important stuff. Is things like crisis. I'm just reading out what's in the quadrant: crisis, pressing problems, deadline-driven projects. They're the things you have to do now, right away. You know, they're urgent, important. The other quadrant two, um, that's your not urgent but important activities. That's things like prevention activities, relationship building, recognizing opportunities, and planning recreation. And that is the quadrant. I'm going to repeat that. Well, that is the quadrant, quad, quadrant, the quadrant we should be working on. That one, the. Uh, ur the important but not urgent activities because that's where your big visions are that's where everything is now you've got the, the quadrant three bottom left which talks about not important and urgent which basically means interruptions uh, some calls some mail some meetings um, pressing matters and popular activities these are things there may be like things like a meeting that you've got in every week but what value are you bring in should you actually be at that meeting so really what that third quadrant is is should you just eliminate it, but tell people why you're eliminating it. Like, don't need to come to this meeting because of X, Y, and Z. Um, and then you've got the last one, which is the not important and not urgent, um, which is things like trivia, busy work, some mail, pleasant activities, and things like that. So that could be, you know, things like I've really reduced, like things like um, I try and reduce my Netflix stuff because I want to do the other stuff that I want to do. So it's reducing all those types of things. Um, so I would say, just to sort of recap them, top left, urgent, important that's the do now top right which is not urgent important that's plan to do then you've got your, the bottom left which is not urgent not important and urgent which is reject and explain and then not urgent not important you should be eliminating them so it is difficult because obviously you've got to just try and juggle those properties anyway i'll just stop talking now and let you guys soak that in because i've done a hell of a lot of talking um trying to explain that um is is there a excuse my ignorance is there a set amount of time we should be setting or planning to spend in each of these quadrants good question yeah yeah it's a really good good thing so that should be to plan in that you should be allowing that in that should be in quadrant two those activities that's your plan to do your uh not urgent important tasks you should be planning those in no sorry i'm not sure you've followed the question I, is there in the grand scheme of time management in the world how much time should I be spent focusing on stuff in my top left box, and how much time should I be fo spent focusing on stuff in my bottom right box? Is there a is there a guide that is given with that? So in the in the book, he talks about you should review weekly, not daily. So essentially, allowing time. So it doesn't actually give you specifics about amounts of time per box. Right. That's a very specific and individual thing that you need to do and design for yourself. So all I can do really tell you is what I do, um, and it's just really around making sure so i've talked about this before in the podcast so when we when we said about things about we want to achieve what do i think that every that my everyday activities lead into the big big goals like inspiration nation all those things you know do my journaling all those small activities lead into the thing that i want to do in inspiration nation doing coaching and all that self-development stuff that's what's leading into my big you know mission to help people help you know helping myself be better and, and helping other people that's really where it sits so every day those again we talked about this before those small activities every day lead to the big things so what i've got to now eliminate quadrant four things like trivia busy work pleasant activities and things and actually i have to say no to things sometimes i have to say no to things which may be 
urgent to other people but not important to the mission that I want to do and that's your quadrant bottom left um, I would definitely re encourage people to check it out and have a go at this and actually read that chapter and actually get the book because um, it's definitely good in uh, I've used it in leadership because it was one of the tools we used in leadership and one of my leadership coaching activities that we did and it's when I work with leaders to actually say okay we'll plan your week you know what what how what can you eliminate right um, and it was really useful because um, what I tended to find and I don't know if you find this because I've got a lot of talk I've got to show up in a minute and uh, what I find is that people think that everything's do it now like and you just ram your schedule with everything and then nothing ends up getting done because you're basically just firefighting essentially so but this is actually for your life this is not just for work this is like across your life really essentially it's like a it's like lead yourself first type book right um but that's where i'm sitting anyway i've talked a lot i'll just be quiet now but good question ryan really good it is very individual you it's almost like talking about self-discipline in the book and actually setting time aside to plan those things actually putting time aside to do this right um so yeah um anything else anything come out of that from you guys and i've talked a lot so I've seen in, in practice a couple of different applications of it um, and and not just people doing it but people advocating it um, like in real life and through social media and stuff like that and one, one view is that basically that top left box is all that matters urgent and important and everything else and as long as you're hitting that tick in the box well done you're striking everything you need to strike which I'm not a strong fan of personally because I feel like it's this. Why the, it's why my firefighters outfit for their birthday. Well, that's it. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. almost that's that becomes what you do. It's almost yes, you're prioritising your activities, but your time is still being a hundred percent led externally to you. Um, and I think, and you you hit the nail on the head with it, Joe. Is that if I got it right, the, the top right that um, important but not urgent. That's that's the box that drives things forward and i've seen that making time for those activities is absolutely key i think that's that's what takes you from performing to building i don't know if they're the right words for it but you know you can get behind that top firefighting one but you 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 know you don't end up changing anything if you like or moving forward or taking time out and it is it is that discipline i think not to fall fall into just looking at that or the others like you said meetings for the sake of meetings or activities you do at home that don't really change anything but you do it because you like doing it um or you're driven by you know other people's things and it's it is a balance across all of them but i think that that top right one is is the absolute key importance and and prioritizing that but making sure you keep an eye on that urgent and important is is the way i that's the way i try and push myself and i don't do it exactly like that like you've said in the, the four boxes i'm kind of i'm wearing the method but i shared last week on the podcast and i've got some more to you i've just completed my first month where i've kind of made the activity list for the month of things i want to do and i said i kind of got 90 percent of it done and but it what it was is because i have time during the day where I can do things and I think I'd slipped into a rut of doing things but not being very effective and I think it was a little bit of a mix of urgent and important whacking stuff out of the way or that kind of nice to do type thing and I was kind of whittling the time away whereas I've now made a list and there are things on there that are they're important but not urgent by the virtue that I can plan them out over a month but I'm making sure I'm doing that. And there's still time where I can do the urgent bits. And I, you know, I had to take one of our pets to the vet the other morning. So it completely crashed what I was doing. So there are things that come in. But again, if I can, because I, I use it for the week. And then what I normally do is I might pick off a few things at the weekend if I've got time. But if uh, 15 out of 20 days in a month, I can tick off what I was planning off that important or urgent list, that's progress is coming in. So I think it's a it's a different slant, but I think it's exactly the same mentality. And I did achieve a lot more in January than I would have done if I'd have just kind of bumbled into the activities every day. So that back to the planning thing, I suppose. Planning is, is really, really key and making sure that it is forward facing stuff as well. And sometimes and I can see them, they're there. There's stuff I don't want to do, but I make sure that that's the only thing I've got to do rather than Oh, I'll just put that to the bottom of the list and then it never gets done. 
Yeah, love that. It's yeah. a bit of a ramble, on, but, but yeah. hopefully that made sense. No, no, you're absolutely right because, you, because actually, what he goes on saying this is something I've experienced myself is that if you do go work in that quadrant two box, which is the uh, important um, but not urgent stuff, is that you reduce the urgent and important stuff yes. because you're working on that stuff. And that's exactly what you said, and that's what exactly what he says in the book as well. If you do work on that stuff, you'll find your firefight will reduce. It's just investing time in that to make that happen. Yeah, and that's when we. It's not what we do with this podcast, right? If you're listening to this podcast, this is an urgent. This is a this is an important and not urgent task, right? This is something for growth. This is something that you will. Okay, what what are the big outlines of my, you know, what I want to do in my life, in my work, and actually all the culminations that we got to now. Like for me here, speaking in front of you now, is this the work that I've done using these techniques and this particular book is to say well actually what am i going to be doing every day that leads towards my goal is start with the end in mind and planning and all this stuff has led me to me doing coaching at work doing all these lovely things at work and actually doing this podcast and having time and make well not having time making time for these important things to happen um, and that's and that's the reason usually i would have probably gone back in a day i would have gone oh, i only got time to do that because i was i wasn't very aware that i'm actually probably spending a lot of i was probably spending quite a bit of my time in quadrant four which is the activities trivia some mail some phone calls time wise and pleasant activities right that's probably why i'm spending quite a lot of time and you know we said in the early days of the podcast right we said we said that was that phrase i think you picked up from a from mentor of yours i'm um i'm busy you know so i'm not busy i'm productive but yes. usually talk, people talk about busy work right the busy works when people spend their time in quadrant one and quadrant that quad, bottom left bottom left quadrant which is the important urgent and then urgent not important stuff that's when they say that's what people say when they're in those quadrants that's what they say it's the busy work right ryan i think we need to yeah. get on to whoever manages the guinness book of records for the most the times that the speech. word quadrant has been said in a 30 <laughs> yeah. minute period <laughs> it's only because it actually says it a lot in the book but go on, yeah. i think i've got a, got a couple of things on this so firstly we, quadrants? we need to come up section of, uh, <laughs> we, need to, we need to come up with the is there a phrase for these four box double phrase developments because you've got you've got the conscious competence one as well that is exactly the same exactly the same well they're four elements but they're, diff they're just different no they range. are you've... but the but the principle of the of the model is the same you. the principle of the model is the same you go from conscious unconscious incompetent which is your bottom right i assume in this scenario then you have your consciously incompetent, which I would assume is your top right in this scenario. Then you've got your unconsciously competent in your bottom left, and then your consciously competent top left, as per this time management matrix that we're looking at now. I'm um, going to say quadrant again, but yeah, you want the quadrant... You want the quadrant, which is... <laughs> I'm just, just going to keep saying it over think, and over and over important. again. But I, like I just, the, think, I, I like I just think, generally, I just think generally speaking, that concept or that drawing, that box that has a double phrase development time or section time, is there a, is there a world worldwide phrase for these? Because we come across them quite regularly. And if there isn't, I, we need to make one. I'm not sure. Maybe this is something you could come up with, Ryan, maybe, I think. Maybe. Perhaps. I think maybe it's, that could a, be, it's like that a quadrant be of quadrants. I think it can be my PhD Quadrant. letter. But, but um, I like I like the analogy you're drawing between. Carry on. I love the analogy you're drawing between the two. I like you're trying to link the models. Well, I quite like well, that. It's not necessarily the model itself, but more how physically those models are written up. How how physically your man Stephen Covey. Yeah. Oh, he's my has, man. Thank you for that. He I is my man. Your, your guy. But my how guy. how he's written these boxes up? He must have taken. I assume some influence from that conscious competence model as to I how no that's idea. drawn up. If, it, if he doesn't, then we need to think of a name as to how those things exist, but whatever. Um, I think that for me, you spend more time in certain boxes depending on where you are in your, I'm going to use the word competent again, in your competence level of your job. If you're new to a job, you're going to be spending probably more time doing the less important stuff and the less urgent stuff because you're not yet trusted to know how to do that because you're still learning so they're going to give you the, the busy work they'll let you they'll let you look at some post or they'll look, let you look at uh i don't know 
their TikTok page or whatever in this scenario. And then as they gain experience and they gain knowledge of how to do the job, they're then trusted with more tasks and more important elements of that job. And they then move through that chain and then get more exposure to the different areas as time goes on. They, If you started a brand new job day one, you probably wouldn't do anything important urgent but day a thousand you probably wouldn't do much if at all anything not important not urgent because you're 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 needed to be doing other things at that point you're you've gone through the the development factory of your job Does that makes sense so i think depending on the amount of time you as an individual spend in these sections professionally could be determined based on the amount of time you've done your job for and how good you are at that job i think that's something that's that that was probably going to be correlatable, as I said, if that's a word. But um, but yeah, and I also think you there are times where you have to spend time firefighting. I know we dug out earlier that Lee knew somebody that that was all they did, but there are all, there are going to be times where you're going to have to spend firefighting. And since COVID and since office workers work from home, which a lot of people are, people were spending so much time in that unimportant unurgent box on their social media during the day taking phone calls from their from their friends because they're also bored at home and they can actually have the opportunity to do that now because when they're in the office that wasn't a thing um there are less chances there are less opportunities for and i definitely experienced this to do what i would refer to as extracurricular activities at your job side projects side hustles as part of your job that perhaps halted as a result of the pandemic and probably haven't started back up yet. There are a few that I did. I'm sure there are a lot that you did, Lee, as well. And I'm sure, Joe, you as well had a few things that were going on that probably just haven't started again. So you then spend less time. It kind of gave a, a work reset for this stuff, but also in, increased, from a business perspective, those poor behaviours that drive the unimportant, non-urgent stuff as well. Um. So there's just a few bits of food for thought there. Yeah, I like it all. And um, yeah, I think I really like that whole thing about, you know, when you're new, you know, that's just a brilliant opportunity to actually use this for the best. Um, and I think that's what you get. I think the thing is, like you say, when you get into a new job, I know when I started in leadership, um, I wasn't given anything. It was just like, here you go. Here's a team. <laughs> Crack on. It, was like, it wasn't like, it wasn't, well, no plan. So I ended up in, I ended up in the important urgent box all the time. <laughs> Everything was just rammed into that box. Like, oh, my team needs to help. I'll just do that. I'll go to meeting, go do that. And, and I remember now, I literally remember it clearly. What, how am I going to do this? Like, I had no tools and I felt rushed off my feet. Um, and I totally, I totally get what you're saying. Like, you know, and I wished actually it would have been like, I wished it would have been a bit more like you said, it would have been lovely to have gone, right, here you go. We'll slowly put you in the water and we'll gradually give you these tools. And then we'll lead you a bit more responsibility here. But it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. But this is obviously a different journey that I was on. In that was, scenario, I though, start, Joe. I was, I was in a start. Go on. Go having on, been in similar things, positions myself over the years as well. And I, I don't think it's all just on the scenario. I think it's the individual as well. Because I, I got some coaching early on where I, I was referred to as I was working like a busy fool. So I was literally sweating, running around the office. And I think it's because I put everything in that top left box mm. but there's stuff in written. there in my mm. the, in my mentality was there that didn't need to be there and mm -hmm. part of what i got cut and i didn't know this is what they were doing at the time but part of it was what what doesn't need to be there what does need to be there what's the most effective way of working how do you get stuff into the top right on our model we're talking about and spend mm -hmm. some time over there you know where's your planning where's your firefighting where's the not where's the stuff you don't need to do where's the stuff you can give to someone else and actually i think my and again it is on the experience thing my lack of experience put me in that top box but not just because i was firefighting because i was firefighting stuff i didn't need to firefight um and actually by being able to categorize a bit better and it was again it wasn't in that model but you can see how you apply it to it and then planning out your time it made me a lot more effective but again it's developing you know people don't know that and quite often you don't understand the need to do it until you're in that pressured situation it's that it's the irony isn't it of kind of having to learn your own mistakes along the way 
Well, actually, it goes back to what Ryan was saying about the unconscious competence model, doesn't it? Because it doesn't come to into your consciousness <laughs> until you realise or someone brings it to your attention, right? You go, oh, I didn't realise. So that's really good. And actually, I'll just read out from the book, actually. Page 120, 50, sorry, 156. 120, so 56. Different edition. It's quite an old edition, so it might be slightly different. But it just says this. I love this bit. It just says, what it takes to say no. Use the model. It says, what it takes to say no. It says, the only time... The, oh, sorry, the only place to get time for quadrant two, which is the um, important, not urgent box, right? The important stuff. Um, time to get quadrant two in the beginning is from quadrants three and four. Um, so it's your, your not, in, not important, not urgent um, stuff um, and your uh, urgent, um, uh, not important, not urgent stuff. So those two bottom quadrants. You can't ignore the urgent, important activities, i.e. the do-it-now stuff that we think is do-it-now, but may not be do-it-now, we plan, but usually the stuff that we think is do-it-now. Um, you still have to do those, although that quadrant one, which is the do-it-now stuff, will start to shrink in size as you spend more time with prevention and preparation in quadrant two. But the initial time for quadrant two has to come out of three and four, which is those activities, like we said, right, do I need to be at this meeting? This goes for your life as well. Do I need to go out at this point? Do I need to like watch that Netflix? You know, it could be just like responding to random emails at work. You know, all these types of things. It could be like I'm spending about four hours, you know, I don't know, watching Netflix or playing this computer game. Could I reduce that so I can spend more time on the things that I want to work on? Um, and those are decisions that we have to make in every part of our life, whether we're a, a husband, a partner, a co a worker, a leader, um, you know, any of those activities, you know, a father, uh, you know, whatever. And it actually talks about roles in this section as well, which is really, really great, actually, because we all adopt different roles. We talk about in, the, in this podcast, or we talk about different roles and what responsibility we've got. So, but this is really, like you say, this book and this sort of matrix can be applied to life. Now, going back to what you were saying, about leaders and stuff. Every time that I talk to leaders and I had to coach leaders, I found, I found that when this, I've got no time, I haven't got time to do this program. We did this coaching program. And it was like what we did, uh, uh, Lee. And, and again, Ryan, I don't know if you experienced it, but I definitely experienced it. Like I said, I was spending a lot of time at Urgent Important. Every, every time I spoke to leaders, I ain't got time for this. It's because a lot of the time they were ramming everything into box one, into that first Urgent Important. And, so, and then when I asked the question, is that something to do right now? Do we have to cancel this coaching session right to do that now? Do we have to do it now? No, okay, so what can you do now? Oh, I can plan it. So it's almost like a moment where they're saying, yeah, I'm planning that now, rather than it's got to be done now, right? It's like there was that this is moment of realisation that actually, oh, okay, I need to take time out to plan these things, to put them in an order. So, yeah, it's super, super powerful. But it's, the thing I find is that, that we don't take time out to plan, to, to actually do this activity we just tend to think, oh, we'll just work out or we won't really sit down maybe for half an hour just to sit down and work out what these things are. And I'm being guilty of that as well. As well. I've been guilty of that. Um, but I'm, start, I'm still guilty to a certain extent. But each day, at the beginning of each day, I try and you know, I plan out my day. What's it going to look like? Um, and I want to make sure those things are feeding into those big, big pieces of work that I want this to, to advance, right? So like you say, building those important relationships, you know, um, recognizing those new opportunities, you know, planning those things. But actually, in this box, it's actually got recreation. So what I found a bit difficult, I don't know what you think this guys, but it's got recreation in not urgent and important. But in um, not urgent and not important, it's got pleasant activities. Now, I could get confused between those things. What's recreation and what's a pleasant activity? So recreation is put in here as important or urgent, but pleasant activity is put in as a not important or urgent. So I'm wondering whether pleasant activity means like your Netflix, like I love gaming or do that. And whether recreation means things like my, I'm going to play tennis, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to think about it in my own life. And what what will those two things would be? Would it be spending time with my beloved and actually having a bit of time where together, building that relationship about having the same time going out for a meal or something? That's probably still an important, urgent and not urgent task because it's something you're about building a relationship and actually improving the quality of your life, right? So that's what I struggle with about it, if you look at this model. But I don't know what you guys think. I think there's a, a difference in what you kind of put in the self care bracket and what you put mm. in the passing time bracket. Yeah. Like and that. so I would say, in, and including Netflix or going out for dinner or playing tennis, all of that is recreation, stuff that is for you for a bit of you time. But I don't know, if I liked organising my books, 
I don't, by the way, this is not what I would do. But if I decided, all right, it definitely gonna, does. I'm going to take them all off the bookshelf and I'm going to put them back what about in your, alphabetical order. What about your Doctor Who cards or something? I don't know. Or your your wrestling belts or something. You know, your, I thought the wall was brilliant. I, I think that's still a recreation, right? I'm trying, what is a, come on, let's try and think of a pleasant activity that we would think is actually. The way, the way I read it is, re, is recreation. Recreation would be like gym or exercise. This is what I'm thinking, but what? But but is that is that pleasant? I don't know. Not always. But it's it's, it's saying it's got to be recreation. No, no, no it's... sorry, it's recreational. Recre... No, it doesn't say pleasant. Yeah, Rec it's recreation. Recreation, recreation, yeah, yeah. and it's by its own definition is the recreation of stuff, right? And I yeah. see that as like exercise or um, sh going shopping. Okay. Food. You have mm. to, that's just your that's your routine of things you have to do. Pleasant activities is. As you say, deciding to watch Netflix for five hours in one night and things like that. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to identify the difference between pleasant and recreation. And I think it's very personal, right? It's a personal thing. But yeah, I, I agree with you there. Recreation. I love, I, the tennis is good because I enjoy it and I'm getting fitness. Uh, I'm sort of killing two birds with one stone. Whereas if I overspent too much time hitting that Netflix button, then yeah, it's probably a pleasant activity I enjoy. But I, but I then I use that as a rule. Ryan, I remember you going to it. I use that like like the other day. I was like doing a a, a real binge on um, getting the YouTube videos uploaded for this channel and all that. I was thinking, right, my reward for getting that done is going to be able to have like like a couple of hours of Netflix. But I think that's where the because... line is. When when does it go from yeah. giving yourself yeah, a bit of time? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to, to figure out. An idol, and I think there's like you yeah. said, I think it's personal for everyone. I'm gonna yeah. if people are watching on YouTube, they can see our timer because we're cheap hoes and we don't pay for Zoom, so we we <laughs> run it. It keeps us true on our time. We don't like to go more than thirty minutes really on a podcast. Plus, we wasted about probably twenty minutes with Joe not being able to stop talking into his microphone, so we could go live right at the start. <laughs> He's a great, he's a technical genius. So oh, yeah. this is good, Joe. So Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, highly recommended. Head over to the YouTube channel. Joe's got loads of little short videos about that. Jose Neuer, Inspiration Nation. Just stick it in, just stick it in Google or in YouTube. You'll get, it, you'll get to that and everything else as well. You can join us live every single week on YouTube and on TikTok as well. The same search there. Search us out on social media at Listen to Oin. Listen T O I N. We will signpost all of this for you and head over to inspirationnation.org.uk for your merchandise. I have a mug here. I'm wearing my hoodie. I think Joe is too. My virtual background doesn't look like my mum, but it's there somewhere. They look brilliant. Head over to the website. And full archive, 200 plus episodes. We are coming up very tightly on our fourth year anniversary. There is a lot of content, episodes and interviews in there as well. And if you do like what we are doing, leave us a five-star review hit subscribe, tell friends and family. Those are the things that help grow what we're doing. We massively appreciate it when people do that. Can we remind people to get on the email list, please? And sign up for the newsletter. Give Joe your email. He wants to send you lots of strange pictures back in return. No, no, don't oh, listen to Oh, that's a different, yeah, sorry, that's a different. Oh, um, my God. That's a different right, newsletter. Let's just, let's just scrap Lee from this for a bit, right? I'll go on to do this, right? So what we want to do, sign up to the email because you're going to get emails from me every week encouraging you, pushing you forward, and also pointing you towards the videos that we release every week. So please, please sign up because it's really, really important uh, for that personal growth. And obviously share the newsletter where people can sign up. We want to get more people, we want to get more subscribers on the email. So please, please, please sign up. The link is in the link trees everywhere. Um, and it's in the YouTube descriptions as well. So go there, go sign up. Go for it. Go on, Lee. Am I back? Am I back in there? Am I trusted? We thank everyone <laughs> listening, watching, join us live, whatever it is. We massively appreciate it. All it's left for me to do is count us down. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys Catch later. You guys Catch later. You guys later. <laughs> Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free and also don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell then you're going to know when another videos go live and don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me 
because those other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Inspiration Nation. And I'll catch you guys later.